Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about stress. We've all heard how stress can kill. So on the top, what we're looking at is the hypothalamus. We see that stress is impacting the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus can send a signal down to the pituitary. And again, there's an anterior pituitary and a posterior pituitary. So in this particular case, we have the anterior pituitary that's going to send signals, ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. It's going to send signals to the cortex, the adrenal cortex. Now the adrenal cortex, cortex, there's the word, cortex can push out glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids. You know the glucocorticoids are cortisol, cortisone, corticosterone. We know the mineral corticoid, mineral meaning sodium, mineral corticoid is aldosterone. So on the right half, we have prolonged stress. Now on the left-hand side, short-term acute stress, we see a different path. We see from the hypothalamus, there are direct signals to the spinal cord. And from the spinal cord, neurological pathway to the adrenal medulla, the inside of the adrenal gland, where we see catecholamines on the bottom left. Catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine. This is a short-term stress response. The adrenaline or epinephrine is going to increase your heart rate. Adrenaline is going to increase your blood pressure. Adrenaline is going to convert glycogen, there's the O-gen, it's inactive, inactive sugar, to glucose, which is active sugar. It's going to dilate the airway, the bronchioles. It's going to dilate them so you get more oxygen, more oxygen, more energy. It's going to change blood flow patterns. When your epinephrine or noradrenaline and adrenaline is released, it's going to drive blood to your muscles so you can get out of danger's way. That's a short-term stress. It's going to increase blood flow to your muscles but decrease blood flow from your digestive tract. This is why your mom or grandma would say don't go swimming or don't go playing after you eat because you want blood in your digestive tract to bring the nutrients to all parts of your body. If you're running around, you're going to get indigestion because you're stopping the digestive process and you're driving blood to your muscles. Okay, so on the left hand side, short term stress, you're running away from a stressful response or a tiger is chasing you and you have to save your life. You want your heart rate to increase. You want your blood pressure to increase driving. You want your blood sugar to increase. You want your cholesterol to increase. But short term. Now, what happens on the right when you have increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased blood sugar, weakened immune system, right, for a prolonged period of time? On the right is your chronic stress response. This is why stress kills. This is called what many people have called adrenal fatigue. When people are under stress, the body's preference, instead of making sex hormones, it produces cortisol. And this is why when people are under stress, infertility rates go up. You know how many couples try to get pregnant and then they're under stress and then it gets worse and worse and harder to get pregnant. When they're under stress, they're pushing out cortisol and they can't produce their sex hormones. Okay. So hopefully this gives you a really strong understanding of stress, how acute stress and short term is needed on the left hand side. But when we're under stress for prolonged periods of time, this really creates a significant amount of problems for people. OK, when we come back in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about blood sugar and the pancreas.